The movie begins in a serene neighborhood on a bright morning. Shannon, one of the locals, nervously wraps an item in cloth in her attic. Shortly after, she discards it in the trash can and allows her daughter, Claire, to ride her bicycle along the street. The family dog happily participates, making it seem like an ordinary day for the child. But the mood shifts dramatically when Claire comes back home. She searches for her mom in the attic, only to find a shocking scene. The film then jumps ahead several years as an adult Claire abruptly wakes up from her slumber. It appears she still wrestles with nightmares of her mother's passing. Claire resides with her single father, Jonathan, who works as a garbage collector. Max, the family dog, has matured into her closest companion. Claire prepares for school and sets off on her bicycle, exchanging greetings with her neighbor Mrs. Drew DeLuca and encountering her maternal uncle, August, along the route. The elderly man attempts to fetch his newspaper, but Claire volunteers to do it for him. While turning her bicycle, the school bully, Darcy, approaches from the other direction. Claire narrowly avoids a collision, but she loses control and falls to the ground, scraping her knee. Despite this, she heads to school and catches sight of her father Dumpster diving with his buddy. This embarrasses her, leading to a heated confrontation. Jonathan defends his actions, stating he's searching for something valuable, but Claire insists he leaves, and he complies. The following scene reveals that Claire is frequently targeted by the popular crowd for bullying. They see her as a dim underdog from a less fortunate background. This perception intensifies when the cruelest bully, Darcy, ruins Claire's months of work by throwing a drink at her poster. Claire's sole companions at school, June and Meredith, share a strong bond, though it's primarily because all three are equally outcasts. We learn that Claire harbors a huge crush on a popular guy named Paul, but he's already taken. Meanwhile, while Jonathan scavenges in the neighborhood, he discovers a vintage music box and opts to keep it due to its impressive appearance. Back at school, Claire ultimately decides to confront Darcy. She strides over and publicly labels her a derogatory term, which naturally angers Darcy, resulting in her slapping Claire. However, Claire doesn't back down and delivers a retaliatory blow. The situation escalates into a physical altercation, with the two engaging in a catfight, while their classmates stand by without intervening. They're preoccupied recording the altercation, but luckily, a teacher intervenes before things worsen. Upon returning home, Claire's dad presents her with a surprise. She discovers a wrapped object on her bed, which turns out to be the vintage music box he found earlier. Struggling to open it, she notices Chinese characters inscribed on the box. Claire manages to decipher the first sentence, Seven Wishes, but dismisses its significance, leaving the box on her table to resume her tasks. Later, she receives a text from her friend urging her to view Darcy's Instagram post. Claire logs onto the internet and discovers that the bully has shared the video of their fight, along with another of Jonathan Dumpster diving at the school. Feeling humiliated and enraged, Claire decides to take a chance with the peculiar box. She places her hands on it and wishes for Darcy to suffer. Following her initial wish, Claire realizes she left Max outside. Upon opening the door, she notices he hesitates to come in, fixating on the box, suggesting either a paranormal sense or perhaps just a lingering scent from the garbage. Later, as Claire sleeps, the mysterious box spontaneously opens, filling the room with its haunting melody. However, the music abruptly ceases and the box closes before Claire can investigate further. The next morning, Darcy awakens to a horrifying sight. Her body is mostly blackened and bruised, a result of contracting necrotizing fasciitis from her recent spa visit. As news spreads throughout the school, Claire can't shake the thought that her wish might be to blame for Darcy's condition. Back home, she snaps a photo of the enigmatic box to research it later. With Max absent, she ventures outside to find him. Suddenly, Claire hears eerie sounds emanating from the crawlspace. Curiosity piqued, she ventures in and discovers a gruesome scene, her beloved dog, lifeless and being consumed by rats. This devastates the teenager, as Max was a gift from her deceased mother. Jonathan and his friend assist in burying the dog as Claire grieves inconsolably. The next day, she seeks out her Chinese teacher at school, presenting him with the characters inscribed on the mysterious box, seeking his assistance in decoding them. Yet, the teacher discloses that the engravings are in ancient Chinese, requiring a scholar for translation. Overhearing this, a student named Ryan steps forward, offering his cousin's expertise in ancient Chinese. 
Despite his offer, Claire declines, skeptical of his intentions, and departs. Without any compelling reason to decline, that evening, she indulges in scrolling through her crush Paul's Instagram profile, admiring him. Feeling emboldened, she resorts to the box once more, expressing her desire for Paul to fall deeply in love with her. Astonishingly, the following day at school, he seeks her out near the lockers. He proceeds to flirt with Claire, even though his girlfriend is present. Meanwhile, back at home, the mystery box spontaneously starts playing once more. Concurrently, at Uncle August's house, he accidentally slips in the bath, fatally hitting his head on the tub. Claire returns home in the evening to receive the tragic news from her father. Jonathan further discloses that their uncle left them nothing in his will. Frustrated, Claire rushes to her room and promptly makes her third wish, for Uncle August to leave his entire estate to her. Shortly after, Jonathan receives a call from the authorities, notifying him that Claire will inherit her uncle's entire wealth. They're utterly stunned, but swiftly gather their belongings and relocate to the lavish mansion. With Claire now affluent, she wastes no time delving into her uncle's wealth, indulging in extravagant spending. She even treats her friends to a shopping spree to flaunt her newfound riches. That night, Claire finally catches sight of the music box playing by itself. But she is completely unaware of the danger that is about to befall her neighbor, Mrs. DeLuca. As the poor woman is working in the kitchen, she accidentally turns on the waste disposal machine. It catches her hair and pulls her scalp apart, killing her on the spot. The next day at school, Paul, now infatuated, ends his relationship with his girlfriend and pops the question to Claire. He also invites her on a date, but she asks for time to consider. Later that evening, Claire resolves to seek Ryan's assistance in uncovering the box's secrets. He eagerly accompanies her to his cousin Gina's apartment for a thorough investigation. Examining the box, Gina identifies it as a Chinese wish pot capable of granting seven wishes. She also notices the letters Lu Mei inscribed on it and speculates about its previous owner. After researching the name online, they discover that Lu Mei's family met a tragic end at the hands of assailants. Thus, she clutched her music box and fervently prayed for days until the demon responded to her plea. Lu Mei harnessed the demon's power to defeat her adversaries and amass wealth. However, in a shocking turn of events, she ultimately committed an unfathomable act for motives shrouded in mystery. Gina attempts to decode the remaining inscriptions, only to find them composed in a far more intricate dialect. She snaps a photo and forwards it to her friend for further insight. In the ensuing scene, while Ryan and Claire journey home, she spots her dad once more rummaging through dumpsters. Frustrated, she returns home and makes her fourth wish, for her dad to be less embarrassing. Much to her joy, Jonathan undergoes a swift transformation into a suave individual, even showcasing his saxophone skills to Claire's friends. Meanwhile, Gina receives an email updating her on the translation progress, leaving her utterly stunned. At Claire's residence, the eerie melody emanating from the mystery box hints at its ominous intent, signaling another impending tragedy. At the same time, Gina's room plunges into darkness due to a power outage, compelling her to hurry outside. She attempts to reach Ryan to disclose the truth about the mystery box, but a sudden gust of wind causes her phone to plummet from the balcony. Rushing back indoors, Gina inadvertently stumbles and fatally impales herself on a sharp statue. This leads to her tragic demise. The following morning, Ryan comes across Gina's broken phone on the ground. Reading the unsent message she had typed, he grows deeply concerned. Hastening to Gina's room, he discovers her lifeless form next to the statue. Later, at school, Ryan approaches Claire, inquiring about any recent wishes she might have made. He discloses the tragic discovery of his cousin Gina's lifeless body in her apartment. Then, he divulges the meaning behind the engravings on the mysterious box. Each wish exacts a toll, claiming a life. Claire is remorseful for Gina's demise but feigns innocence, denying making any wishes before departing. In the cafeteria, she resolves to accept Paul's offer to date, despite enduring continued ridicule from her peers. As a result, Claire returns home and makes her fifth wish that she becomes the most popular girl in school. To her delight, Paul instantly invites her to a party where only the popular kids hang out. When Claire reaches there, she is the star of the event. Everyone praises her with compliments, and Paul even kisses her passionately. That night, Claire has another nightmare about her mother's death.
Upon waking, she sees someone lurking on the balcony. She chases after them, but they vanish. The next morning, at Mrs. Dach de Luca's place, she discovers her lifeless body, confirming the deadly nature of the mystery box. Claire tells her friends about it right away, but they're skeptical and advise her to get rid of the mystery box. She initially heads to toss it, but changes her mind upon hearing her dad playing the saxophone. The next night, there's a farewell party at school, drawing all the students together. While making out with Paul in his car, Claire requests his phone. Upon browsing his gallery, she's stunned to discover her own pictures, revealing Paul as her nighttime stalker. Claire ends the relationship on the spot, but Paul isn't ready to let her go. During the party, Meredith is on the 27th floor playing a game when the music box mysteriously activates. Tragically, Meredith becomes the next victim as the elevator she boards suddenly plunges downwards, killing her instantly and shocking everyone present. Ryan then brings the shaken Claire to his home for comfort. He reveals that he researched the box and discovered that all its past owners met tragic ends after their seven wishes were fulfilled. Claire realizes that making two more wishes would lead to her demise as well. They attempt to destroy the box to prevent this outcome, but find it's an impossible task. So, Claire simply locks the mystery box inside a vent. That night, Claire she is once again visited by her crazy ex, Paul. When she refuses to take him back, he slits his wrist in front of her. This prompts Claire to quickly call an ambulance for him. Unfortunately, in the morning, Claire and Ryan learn that the mystery box has gone missing. As the box disappears, its wishes begin to unravel. The authorities reclaim the house due to Uncle August's unpaid taxes, compelling Claire and her father to return to their old cottage. Along with losing their wealth, Claire also loses her popularity, reverting to her previous status as an unpopular and uninteresting kid whom nobody likes. Adding to the mix, she's a serial killer. At school, she finds out that June was the one who took the mystery box. June insists she did it for everyone's safety, but Claire is unconvinced. She grabs the box in anger, leading to a struggle where June falls down the stairs and gets hurt. Upon arriving home, Claire makes her sixth wish for her mother's return. Suddenly, Shannon is alive again, embracing her daughter. Claire also learns she has two new siblings. They spend the day together, blissfully forgetting their troubles. However, when Claire ventures into the attic, she uncovers something startling. It appears Claire's mom owned the music box before her, the very one she discarded at the movie's beginning, which led to her tragic actions. Suddenly, the box begins playing a haunting melody. Meanwhile, Jonathan is outside in the garden, trimming branches with a friend. Claire realizes her father is in peril and hurries to alert him, but her cry startles Jonathan causing him to lose balance. His friend accidentally decapitates Jonathan with a chainsaw. Shocked and devastated, Claire retreats to her room and makes her final wish. Claire wishes to return to the day Jonathan discovered the box. When she wakes, she finds her wish granted. Max, Meredith, Jonathan, Mrs. Nang DeLuca, and her uncle are all alive in this new timeline. Quickly, Claire retrieves the mystery box from the dumpster before her father can stumble upon it. She wraps it in cloth and gives it to Ryan at school, without disclosing its contents, but urging him not to open it. Though Ryan is perplexed since he doesn't know Claire yet, she surprises him with a kiss and a date invitation. As she starts to leave, Darcy's car unexpectedly hits her. This instantly takes her life, marking her the seventh and last victim. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and leave a like to support the channel. Thanks for watching.